Hello everyone, welcome back again to Plax's uh, 3D Shadow Foundation course from uh, Theory to Practice. In the previous uh, example, we estimated the bearing capacity of shallow foundation on uh, loose uh, sand. In this example, in this uh, lesson, we are going to uh, simulate the ultimate bearing capacity uh, and uh, we are going to estimate the bearing capacity of shallow foundation on medium dense sand using uh, Plax's uh, 3D. So, lesson 8, we will uh, open uh, this Plax's uh, tutorial from uh, lesson 8 and we will uh, save this example under a different name and we will, uh, we will use uh, the dense sand instead of uh, the uh, loose sand in this example. We open uh, the Plax's uh, example from lesson 8. So uh, we are going to save uh, this uh, file under a different name. So we will save it in our course Plax's 3D Shallow Foundation course. So we will uh, save in uh, lesson 9. That's why I copy the name in here. So, okay. Right now we uh, save the project for uh, the lesson 9, which is building capacity of shallow foundation on medium dense sand. So, uh, what should I change in uh, this example? As I say, the soil geometry and the footing geometry are uh, the same uh, except for uh, the material of the soil so instead of loose dense sand we will use uh, medium dense sand uh, I will copy this material and ok but we have to assign this material to the boreholes so that's why this is our ball horse in here I double clip I double click on the borehole <coughs> or I can go to the soil in here modify soil layer so I open the material and I assign the medium dense sand to the borehole like that okay uh, now we go to the sorry now we uh, select the uh, point for a curve so the point at the the coordinates of a point at the center of the footing is 0, 0, 004. Okay, we click, we select a node which are plate. Okay. Okay, we save the project and now this example is uh, ready for analysis and we start the calculation. Okay, this uh, will take maybe a very long time. That's why I will pause a video for. This is a deformed shape of the uh, soil and footing. So we are interested in the low settlement curve. We go to curve manager, new, uh, we select M stage and displacement in uh, Z direction. Okay, similar to uh, before we can uh, deactivate the first and the second calculation phase 
actually we could wait a little bit that this uh, uh, curve would become more linear but it's okay uh, right now also we can estimate the load settlement curve easily from this curve and we export uh, the data from Plaxis to Excel and uh, this was the load settlement curve uh, from the previous example for uh, the loose uh, soil so uh, we will delete this and we copy the data in here we uh, format it as a general and we delete this one so we will copy this one to here so we have to be careful in uh, here we have to change 120 to 300 because in then sound we use uh, 300 kilonewton per square meter as a surface load also this is a uh, settlement okay so now we will add uh, this data to this curve also select data uh, footing on medium pens send okay the y direction is the settlement okay okay so uh, we can see that the ultimate bearing capacity of the uh, medium dense sand is much bigger than uh, the lowest uh, sand so right now we can estimate uh, the ultimate bearing capacity of loose and dense sand and also the settlement we draw a curve like this okay so this point is uh, the ultimate bearing capacity of uh, dense sand so the minor one is 10 so uh, this 260 70 and 80 so for uh, this is the if we write like that this is dense sand and this is loose sand this is the ultimate Q and this is the ultimate settlement uh, for the dense sand as we uh, said 260, 70 and 280 280 kilonewton per square meter and for uh, the case of uh, a loose sand we did it before and we will do it right now as well so it is about 110 it's about 110 and for the settlement we also have to investigate what is the settlement corresponding corresponding to the ultimate uh, load of the soil so actually we can estimate it from uh, here for example in the sun it is uh, 280 so we go in uh, the load column 280 uh, for example we can choose uh, this one it's about uh, minus uh, 30 76 30 76 and for uh, the loose it's uh, 110 so we go to here 110 For example, we can choose in here it's about 70. It's about 70 millimeter. So we can 
see that in in Densan, uh, the ultimate bearing capacity is much bigger than the uh, is bigger than the Lewisan, and the ultimate bearing capacity uh, happens at a low level of a uh, settlement compared to the uh, Lewisan. Uh, the ultimate bearing capacity occurs at a high level of settlement. So why this is happening in uh, cohesionless soils? wrote a short answer for uh, these questions for example in Lusan uh, condition the ultimate bearing capacity typically occurs at a higher settlement level as we said before uh, this is because uh, in Lusan the particles are not uh, closely uh, packed together as in uh, this figure so this uh, leads to greater settlement before uh, sun reaches its ultimate bearing capacity uh, also in uh, Densan, uh, where the particles are uh, very closely packed together, the ultimate bearing capacity usually occurs at a lower settlement level compared to the Lusan. Uh, the dense arrangement of particles provide more immediate support to the footing, resulting in less settlement before the sun reaches its ultimate bearing capacity. Uh, so that's why the, party, uh, the particles are less deformable and can support higher loads with a uh, minimal settlement. We can see in this figure that in loose uh, sun there are uh, many voids in between the sand particles while in dense sun the voids are uh, less. So in uh, summary we can say in uh, loose sun that typically leads to a higher settlement before ultimate bearing capacity is reached while then sun leads to a lower settlement due to its ability to support higher loads with less deformation so this was uh, lesson 9 and thank you for watching i hope it was beneficial uh, until the next lesson uh, see you